A man is in critical condition tonight in hospital following a police shooting. This is the second time in less than a week that's happened in our city. Officers responded to several 911 calls about a man carrying a weapon at the intersection of 50th Street and 137th Avenue. Witnesses telling police they saw a man loading a weapon. Two officers arrived at the scene, spotted a man pointing what appeared to be a long-barreled shotgun at bystanders in the area. When the man saw police, he turned and pointed the firearm at them. Shots were subsequently fired by police and the male was struck. Police officers immediately called for assistance from EMS and performed emergency first aid. We understand from social media that there are photographs and videos of this incident that are circulating. We also believe that several witnesses observed this mail, contacted police and continued driving. If you have photos or video of this incident while it was underway or witnessed this mail holding a weapon, please call our police complaint line. The man was rushed to the Royal Axe Hospital and has been identified as Glenn Coco Ironchild. Meanwhile, the officer who fired his weapon is a 10-year police vet. The officer and his partner have now been put on leave. The Alberta Serious Incident Response Team is investigating. Now, this police shooting comes just days after a similar incident, which claimed the life of 55-year-old Vitaly Savink. He was shot dead by an officer following a traffic stop Thursday afternoon in southwest Edmonton. An officer pulled over a suspected impaired driver. An encounter ensued, which led the officer to shoot the driver after he exited his vehicle. Police confirming a large hunting knife was found near the victim. Savink's death is considered our city's 10th homicide of the year. Well, the city remains well short of its ambitious plan to house the homeless. The 10-year plan had an initial goal to open 1,000 supportive housing units, but the latest update shows just 213 have been built in eight years. Now, officials want to update that plan, turning to Edmontonians, asking them to take an online survey. The mayor says that there has been progress, but one challenge has been inconsistent funding from both federal and provincial governments in an effort to help build that housing. In fact, Don Iveson says Edmonton needs $21 million annually for the next decade to meet its supportive housing targets. One of the striking numbers is that, uh, uh, you know, five or six years ago, there was about $100 million of investment coming in from provincial and federal governments to build new housing units. That declined over four or five years to the point where the number was zero. There was no new investment happening. Now, that is starting to come back, but it hasn't even gotten close to the level of investment that we saw early on when all orders of government were committed together through interagency and intergovernmental collaboration to a goal of ending homelessness. As we enter the final three years of the current plan, it's an opportune time to take a stock of the progress made on each of the plan's five goals and identify where strategies are working, where they need to be adjusted, and perhaps where we need to uh, take different approaches. The most recent homeless count taken in October found there were just under, or just over 1,750 people living on the streets. However, many advocates believe the true number is larger. Council is waiting for the province and Ottawa to table their budgets to see just how much money will be available for supportive housing for the chronic hard to house population. A weekend winter wallop means more bad news for motorists in more than one way, as a seasonal parking ban is in effect for the city. Crews are working around the clock to plow and sand city roads and bus routes after all that snow we received. Vehicles parked on designated routes, though, may be ticketed or towed as a result. The parking ban is slated to end Wednesday night. Even if plows have made an initial pass in your area, the parking restriction remains in effect until all roads in the city are cleared. There are no plans right now for neighborhood blading. After a cold snap last week, temperatures already started to improve. Should be able to get above zero as early as tomorrow. A more confirmed cases of the mumps in our province, including right here in our city. Alberta Health Services says there were eight new cases last week, bringing the provincial tally to 38. In Edmonton, two more cases brings our total to 16. Now by comparison, there were eight cases in all of Alberta, in 2016. 
AHS has, as a result, officially declared an active outbreak in Edmonton, as well as the southern zone. Symptoms of the mumps include fever, headache, tiredness, sore muscles, dry mouth, difficulty chewing and swallowing, along with the swelling of the cheeks or the throat. Well, the oil industry may not escape the red ink this year. The Conference Board of Canada predicting Canadian oil companies will lose $1.1 billion in 2017. That is better than the $8.6 billion that was lost in 2016. Economists say the industry won't post positive numbers until the fourth quarter, despite stronger financial conditions and the promise of new pipeline projects. The board estimates capital investment this year is expected to hit $22 billion. Capital spending peaked at $62 billion back in 2014. The conference board says oil likely averaged $55 U.S. per barrel this year before rising to 71 by 2021.